This is Twit. So there's a story that broke this week uh, that I think sort of, uh, it certainly we were talking before the show, caught a bunch of us by surprise. I'm assuming if it caught us by surprise, it caught a lot of people by surprise. And that is this notion that Google and others are finding ways to take your online activity and link it to your offline activity. Um, now, Google says that it is doing this and that its technology enables uh, it to do this in a way that connects up data about its anonymized users and not about you, Dan Coates, or whatever your name may be <laughs> specifically. Um, what it is doing uh, that broke this week is taking credit card purchases, real world credit card purchases, and providing uh, its advertisers, its clients, its customers, uh, with information that links those purchases back to their advertising strategy with Google. In other words, if you've posted an ad, your furniture store say, uh, and you want to know if Google users are seeing that ad, clicking on that ad, and then coming into your store and purchasing things, that's what Google uh, says that it's going to be able to deliver to its advertiser customers. Um, it is going about this uh, through its uh, analytics, innovations, and machine learning capabilities, which are growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, if you've been paying attention to uh, the world of AI and Go, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and specifically, uh, Google, in addressing its customers, uh, over a thousand marketers from around the world attending Google Marketing Next. Uh, it has a blog post from Sridhar Ramaswamy, its senior vice president of ads and commerce, specifically addressing those people, but of course available for all of us to see what they're up to too. And uh, one of the things they're up to is attempting to deliver to their advertising customers this connection between the ads that they place and the purchases that people uh, may be prompted to make after having been influenced by those ads. Uh, one of the things the blog post says, uh, tells these customers of Google's is that if they're collecting email information at the point of sale for their loyalty programs, uh, they can import store transactions directly into AdWords themselves or through a third party data provider. But even if their business doesn't have a large loyalty program, they can still measure store sales by taking advantage of Google's third party partnerships, which capture, capture approximately 70% of credit card and debit card transactions in the United States. As Technology Review wrote about that particular factoid, so if you buy stuff with a card, there's a less than one in three chance that Google doesn't know about it. <laughs> so uh, with that information, uh, they go on to tell their customers there's no time consuming setup or costly integrations required on their end. They also don't need to share any customer information. Uh, this is what Google's telling them after they opt in, they can automatically report on their store sales in AdWords. Uh, both solutions match, both solutions leading back to um, the, the customer's collection of email and putting it in manually into AdWords. Both solutions match transactions back to Google Ads in a secure and privacy safe way and only report on your aggregated and anonymized store sales to protect your customer data. So Zoe, what do you think about all this? Yeah, so it's uh, it's interesting and as you said, um, a bit surprising. So, I mean, I think one of my questions in, in hearing this is trying to understand exactly how it works, you know, because in privacy law, the, um, the devil is really in the details about exactly what you're doing. And of course, um, companies are often loath to give those details um, in describing exactly what they're doing. So, you know, just reading this description, the way I understand, sorry for all the puffing, let me put this down a little. Um, the way I understand how this is working is that probably um, I'm guessing that the third parties that Google is getting the credit card transaction information from are the credit card processors who often serve as middlemen between the acquiring bank, which is the account, uh, the bank that maintains the merchant's bank account and the merchant. And I, I'd imagine that's the case because my impression is that industry is highly consolidated 
So Google might just have to partner with a few players to get up to 70% of um, credit card information. And mm-hmm. then I suppose that Google is matching the names of its users, you know, based on profile information for its accounts, uh, with the names on the credit cards. Um, because I don't think, and I you know, God knows, you know, Google collects a lot of information, but I don't think that Google is collecting um, names in a reliable fashion, um, just generally, um, unless someone opens an account and, you know, puts that in their profile information in Google, at least in kind of um, a consistent way. Um, though, of course, please let me know if I'm wrong. So I'm guessing what Google is doing here is that they're um, tying the, the names that they have on these user accounts to the names on the credit cards. And so, you know, I, I think that makes me wonder, you know, how accurate this is. Um in part, you know, it's probably accurate a good amount of the time, but I, I know for me personally, the name on my credit card is not the name on my Google account. You know, I try to be tricky and put a, a different name in. Um, so I guess I would wonder, I, I guess it's kind of a global question about, you know, exactly how is this working in practice? Um, and then Google sets, says it sets up this kind of double blind um, encryption process or double blind security process so that the actual information about, you know, the names of um, the the um, Google's users aren't revealed to the merchants. So they don't know that, you know, Zoe Argento went in and bought, you know, was looking online for, I don't know, a lawnmower and then went into the store and bought a lawnmower. They just know that a certain percentage of people who went and looked at advertisements um, that they placed went in and bought, you know, a particular product. Um, so I, I think, you know, that's roughly the way it would work. Um, yeah. So, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack um, in what you just said, and I, I want to try and suss some of it out. Um, first of all, you raise a good point that that maybe Google doesn't know your name if you don't have a Google account. Now, I don't know how many people who use Google regularly, and, and certainly if you're using all of it, the rest of its services besides search, you're going to have a Google account, right? You need one for mm-hmm. email and YouTube and everything else. Um, so there probably is a subset of people who who don't have Google accounts and may be using Google somewhat anonymously. You you raise the, the idea that um, perhaps it's possible for them to know the names of users who are using the service just for search and don't have an account. Um, I, I wonder if it if it has technology that could figure that out. I wouldn't be terribly surprised to learn that it did, but um, it's certainly not something that they're going into any detail about here in this blog post as to how they're putting this together. The other thing they would not be going into any detail about here, um, number one, because it would be proprietary, and number two, because I think it would freak the heck out of people, is exactly what you're speculating about here, Zoe, that they are matching up real world credit card names with real world Google accounts and that they at least have a database that knows uh, in a very non-anonymized way, if you're right, um, if you clicked on an ad. Or I wonder if they know, um, to what extent they know at least that an ad was displayed to you. Because I think that um, that, again, is something you can parse, that uh, people see ads online and perhaps are influenced by them without ever clicking on them. So I wonder how Google parses that data as well, um, but but in any event, uh, whether they're knowing whether they displayed it to you or you clicked on it, um, if they are matching up your uh, named identified Google account with a named identified credit card account, um, I think that would that would uh, give a lot of people pause. But it's probably um, a likely way that this is working, as you say. Uh, and then the other thing I thought <laughs> that we should. Um, unpack a little bit is uh, people, you know, I I think you're in the minority, Zoe, of people who would use a different name on their Google account than than on their credit card. Uh, Well, I am a privacy lawyer. (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, but it's not probably not a bad idea. Uh, Mike, what were you going to add? Well, yeah, I was I found this to be somewhat astonishing. And Zoe, it seems like you're exactly right that this information must be getting obtained from the the 
the processors, uh, which, as you alluded to, are the ones that process these transactions. But I, I, I'm surprised to hear that processors would be allowed, if that's indeed how they're getting this information, that processors would be allowed to share any information regarding a transaction that you did with your local convenience store or you know, local furniture store or whatever. What, what's the situation there? Are processors able to disclose information about your transactions? They must be able to if that's how this information is getting shared. Right. So I think it really largely depends on the um, contractual obligations that the credit card processors have. Um, so kind of the big set of contractual obligations that are pushed down on credit card processors are the um, the payment card industry data security standards. Um, so you may be familiar with these. These are called PCI DSS. And so any merchant basically has to know about this, and it's usually a very painful subject that they hate. <laughs> um, so basically, this is a, a long set of data security standards that anyone who's dealing with credit card information in any way is supposed to comply with. Um, it does not have um, force. It's, it's not you know passed by a statute. It's a set of contracts. So the mm -hmm. credit card brands have come up with this, and then they push it down by contract to the acquiring banks, um, which push it down by contract. You know, they're required in the contract with the um, the credit card brands to push it down to the merchants. Um, and it also gets pushed down to the credit card processors. But nowhere in the payment card um, industry data security standards does it say that you can't disclose credit card information. It just says that if you do disclose it, you have to make sure that the same kind of contractual obligations are pushed down to the party who's who's using that information. 